to Sue. Sue's Pratt. All right. I'm going to hold on one more thing here. You want to start your, if you want to get a video, you can do that. If not, you don't have to. Sue's whatever you like. Sue's Pratt, welcome to Off Planet Radio. Namaste. Welcome, everyone. I'm going to turn my camera on. Hello, my dear. Hi. We just recently became Facebook friends now, didn't we? Yes, yes, and I uh, saw your child's first day at school today. <laughs> and, of course, I've raised three children, so I feel your joy and your pain, Chris. But yesterday, he rode his two-wheel bike on his own for the first time. He came up to me. His friends are riding without training wheels. He says, Daddy, can you take off my training wheels? And I says, sure. And he got on and started riding. Nice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What do you want to work on today, my dear? Well, okay, Chris. So, I would be the child of parents that were manipulated by the MK Ultra program on both sides of my lineage. And um, from what I understand, my mom <clears throat> was more of a transcendental medium. I always knew her as a split personality, and my father was born to a negative blood mother, so he was born with um, not only physical small birth defects, but also emotional. And so the beautiful thing is, is that since I've come online with everybody, and they <clears throat> hidden history of my family has come forward and I have to tell you that from where I sit I know that all my kin is involved in this and that they've been sending a lot of love and um, a lot of energy and say for example my grandfather on my maternal side was the managing editor of the Custer Combat Tier which was an offshoot of Stars and Stripes. And um, he felt so terribly guilty for not being with his wife when my mom was born. And um, he was actually, like I said, the secretary for all these big shits. And he was too old to have to kill anybody. He had secretarial skills. And he just hoped that his story would get told, which, of course, <clears throat> comes to the continuation of purpose. He was a scribe. I'm a scribe. I have a job to do. And I know in other lifetimes the offenses <clears throat> that came out of my mouth, I'm sure, were countless. And that's why I try to put everything in the best verbiage that I can and radiate the love and the light and everything, but I'm in the major battle with this and that's what I'm here to do. So as far as on a genetic level, whether you look at it from a Western medicine standpoint of redheads having a genetic jaw mutation, or if we go back to the MK Ultra, my life, my earliest memory was uh, my parents shoving me in a box to sneak me into a car show, you know, just to save money. And then um, I've already told Randy, the summer before I started kindergarten, I was almost shot at Scott Air Force Base. Um, my mom and dad left me with a general's wife, a Chinese woman that couldn't speak English. And I did the old story where you close your eyes and you spin around three times and you start walking. And I was going through a field of tall grass and I was scared. And then when I came to the clearing, where I was was behind the targets, behind the berm. And, um, you know, they say ready on the left, ready on the right, ready on the firing line. And when they went to turn the targets, Someone saw that I was back there. I guess the red hair kind of hit them to it, you know. And, of course, the memory was that my father came um, 
running out on the field yelling at me, telling me what a bad girl I was. Now, I've been working through my timelines and my life charts now for years, and I never did have a problem with loving them unconditionally and understanding the whole entire saga from where I was at along the road. But say, the last few years of my dad's life, you know, I had to spend time with him, Chris, and explain to him that I wasn't a bad girl. It was, it, 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 they shouldn't have left me alone with a woman that couldn't take care of me. So my dad has now crossed over, um, and him and my mom both passed within <clears throat> three months of each other in uh, May of 2010. But my dad has visited Joe, who is my twin flame soulmate that I'm with. And uh, he was a cop. And, you know, he tells Joe that he's so glad that he's on the other side watching because he doesn't understand what's going on. So if I can pull my job off, Chris, besides everyone's alleviation of suffering that's still in the physical, the message that I've received is that the astral is calling for that, too. Okay. I already did some dials, and the first thing we're going to do is work in your consciousness. We're going to remove our cons out of your consciousness. Okay, so, so that way you, you can, your free will, your, your consciousness can go beyond what, what's going on here, okay, so you can get there. I've got my show night. I'm ready to go. All right, here we go, darling. Okay, within Sue's consciousness. In the consciousness, archons, false. Cast out all archons from Sue's consciousness. Send them to ether plane. Consciousness, all levels of consciousness, archons, false. Archons, false. Okay, quite a few in there. Archons are leaving. There they go. Okay, let me know if you feel a bit of upliftment. Now, Sue's consciousness, true. Consciousness, true. That is now coming back in. Your consciousness is now your own. Okay, what problem? We now need to work on within uh, Sue's place. And they're spelling out that the problem is it is within her, within the astral, astral body, I'm going to remove. Body of the body of your father is, is, is quarantined within her astral body. Okay, so the body of your father, the, the energy of your father is in quarantine in your astral body. Does that resonate? Yes. Shall we truly send it over? Please. Okay. The energy, the body of Sue's father, sanctuary truth. Send it into sanctuary. The body of Sue's father within her astral body, dive it into sanctuary, please. Sanctuary true. Sanctuary he is now going over, truly going over. Sue's astral body, true. Astral body, true. Beautiful. That was nice. That was very peaceful. How was that feeling over there, my dear? Wonderful. Okay, you, you felt a nice shift out of that. I can see. I can see. This is where I get this is where I get three hundred pound bikers crying on my floor in my house <laughs> doing this type of thing. Are you ready for the next step? Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, let's go. What problem do we now need to work on with Sue's face? 
and we follow his Katie. Okay, astral soul is astral soul is The astral soul. Okay, we're going to get a reptilian out of there. The astral soul is actually known as the soul of souls. Here we go. Then Sue's astral soul. Soul of souls, reptilian fall. We'll cast out any and all Draco reptilians from Sue's astral soul. Send it directly to ether. Astral soul, Draco reptilians, all reptilians. False. Cut all cords and connections within Sue's astral soul. All Draco reptilians, all reptilians, send them to ether, please. Draco reptilians. Here he goes. Bye bye, you ugly green son of a gun. Does that feel a little lighter? Yeah, I'm feeling really good. Awesome, awesome. Let's clean it up. Sue's astral soul, source, true. Astral soul, source, true. Source, true. We're going to connect it directly to source. Okay, beautiful. There it is. That's going to change a lot of things within your whole outlook on, on, on everything. Tomorrow is going to be a different day. Thank you. Okay, now let's do one more, but problem. Now I need to work on all of them Sue's, please. Is. Okay, our cards are in her. In her. All right, Sue's entire physical body, Archons, all. Cast out all Archons from Susan's entire physical body, send them to ether. Sue's entire physical body, Archons, false. Cast out all Archons. Say goodbye to bad Archons. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not That's, an Archons. That sucker did not leave quietly. <laughs> I, was an, I was an ugly one, that one. Okay. Wow. I felt that, too. Yeah, how, how's that feeling, my dear? I feel really blessed. That, that was really intense, Sue. I was That feeling, was intense. I was feeling all of that. Like, I was having, like, I don't know. Take yeah, no, no, anybody else who's listening and watching right now, podcast or not, live or podcast. Exactly. You're gonna feel it. Yeah. You're gonna feel it. Okay. Yeah. Let's, one more with Sue's. One more. What problem now for Sue's, please? And problem is okay. Um, okay. We're done with you. We don't want to go any further than that. We want, don't want to knock you on your butt. Can I show you what I just picked up? Please. This is a stone that manifested in the yard. Okay. Um, I'm sure I know what this is and what the purpose of it is. And then I'll show you another witness. That's, that scarab manifested in 2007 on this incense burner after I worked with a metaphysician. And... Um, of course, one of the messages that I've been bringing since I came online was the message of rejuvenation and transformation and everlasting life. And that's what's happening now. Yes, it is. Amen. Let it be so. Keep in touch, my dear. Thank you. Thank you, Suze. Thank you, everybody.
All right, so now we're going to go to, hold on.